uh, Real Madrid. So, yeah, Real Madrid. Well, they, they, they did well in the Classico, but also they showed um, some of their weaknesses they, they have as well. Uh, I mean, they, they are so powerful up front. Um, they, they can score goals out of nothing, but still they, they've showed that they are sometimes vulnerable at the back. And, and as a team, they're not as compact as, as they used to be uh, in the beginning of the season. So, uh, in the end, they, they, they got a defeat. I think Barcelona deserved to win that game, uh, despite uh, Real Madrid did, did, uh, did uh, well enough in, in parts of it. But again, uh, winning a game, and especially when those uh, two big clubs are facing each other, you need to be uh, almost perfect to, to win a game like that. Carlo Ancelotti makes three changes to his 11. The big news is that James Rodriguez is back in the side less than two months after breaking a bone in his right foot. Arbelo and Varane also come in. Carvajal rested, Pepe injured and Isco suspended. But it's the first time in about five months that Ancelotti's had a full-strength midfield to pick from. How significant is that as we enter this vital stage of the season? Yeah, it's uh, really important for, for them. Uh feeling strong, feeling that they have uh, everybody to, to, to help the team uh, winning all those 10 games, um, especially James uh, James uh, coming back. Uh, Modric, I think, is very important for, for this team. He, he will give up uh, some more balance to the team, some more ball possession, um, uh, or, or how to use it properly, that, that uh, ball possession. Uh, and in the end, what they need is balance, really. They have uh, everything at, at this club to, to score goals, to, to be strong at defence. They only need to have the right balance. Eight changes for Granada from the side that drew 0-0 with Eibar. Only Oya, uh, Baba and Fran Rico remain. What does that tell you about the way they are approaching this game? Yeah, it's, it's quite strange because on one side, Abel Resino, the manager at Granada, is uh, saying why not coming here and winning this game? Why not surprising Real Madrid at, at the Bernabeu despite the noise is difficult? But on the other side, he may, he may be resting players for the weekend uh, game, which he may see as more important. It's a lot of changes and, and uh, most of them are uh, key players at, at the team. So I, I see it as he's saving energies for, for a more important game, a more win win winnable game uh, uh, halfway through the, through the week. Yeah, it's a massive game for both sides. Can Real Madrid cut Barcelona's lead? Let's find out in the company of Jerry Armstrong and John Driscoll. Thank you, Matt. Ten to play, four points behind, no room for mistakes. Real Madrid surely have to win. In Madrid, they've been evoking memories of 2007 when Barca did drop four points in the closing weeks. And Fabio Capello's team nicked the title on the head-to-head -head rule. They could do that under their current Italian coach. That's not something you can say too often. He doesn't work that hard. That's a good ball for Benzema. And he stuck it on the volley and... Lathabal had to make a decent save at the near post. Well, excellent cross from James. Sweep, volley. Benzema keeps his concentration right, doesn't take his eye off the ball and hits the target. An excellent save from Lathabal. Tuesday week against Atletico Madrid. Oh, oh my goodness. Up between. Goalkeeper and central defender Gareth Bale almost able to steal in between them. Well, he, he didn't take the gamble as Alathabal's coming for it. The centre half, I think he's got to have got a shout. He has to have got a shout. And you can see there, Bale just nips in in front of Juan Carlos and gets his toe to it. And that was almost the opening goal. Juan Carlos is a former Real Madrid man. He's a winger though, isn't he, when he was a, a kid coming through at Real Madrid? They all were wingers. Look at Juan Fran at Atletico Madrid. He was a right winger and he ended up as a right back. But Barcelona's had a great spell under Pep Guardiola and certainly in the last seven or eight years. Here's Ronaldo. And the step over as he goes beyond Fouquier. He smacks it into the side netting. Yeah. Get closer. Good skill. Only thing he does wrong is miss the target. He misses it in the near post. There's a step over and totally confuses Fulkier and gets that strike in. He got the angle right, but just didn't hit the target. Here is the, the, the parent club, if you like, Udinese. This is where Egalo was at. Watford fans will know that Egalo was a red-hot striker who keeps oh, on scoring goals. Away. And a 
chance for Ibanez to, to run a go for wow. goal, and it wasn't far away, was it? Because Ziyech was diving, there was no touch there. Wow, that is a great chance for Ibanez. And he knocks this one inches wide of the far post. Look how close this is. And Sergio Ramos backs off too far for me and sends a penalty. He's got to put pressure on the defender. And that's poor defending defensive play. Initially, it was a, a poor ball that gave Ibanez the opportunity. About it. Here's Perry Benzema. Marcelo on the overlap. Well timed run. Oh. Decent cross. Oh, and a miss. It was oh, below up. All the way up from the back into the centre forward position. And he finished it like a right back. Well, he did. That's what I was going to say. You can see why he's plays right back. He comes in. Why doesn't he open his body up and side foot it into the back of the net? It's a great ball from Marcelo. He tries to flick it with the outside of his right foot. And that's the wrong option for me. He gets across the front of the defender, Juan Carlos, and he should have scored. Of all the players in the park, when was the last time Arbeloa scored? A year, two years, three years? Score, uh, in the, he scored one in the Champions League this season, didn't he? I'm trying to remember it, but uh, yeah, he's got one to his name. He doesn't get many. This is Fulquier. They're working hard to try and win the ball. It's Hammers who does emerge with it. Benzema. Tony Kroos had to stretch. And this ball to try and get Gareth Bale in behind, and it breaks nicely for Bale around the goalkeeper, and Bale must surely score, Good and he ball. does. Well, they couldn't stop Gareth Bale. Too strong, too calm in front of goal, but Real Madrid have their goal. Well, do you know what I said to you about the offside and trying to play a high line? But when you've got somebody like Ronaldo and Benzema and Bale who've got pace, that's the key. And Tony Cross's ball was excellent. Maybe a little bit underweighted, which gives the defender half a chance to try and make that slide and tackle. There's Cross coming to celebrate with Gareth Bale. But he's onside and he gets in and he just manages to nick the ball away from the defender. Round the goalkeeper, will have the ball, and then he taps it into the back of the net. Not the best defending from Mainz, if you ask me. I think Mainz could have done an awful lot better there. Do you not think he was favourite? I thought that he was a favourite. But Gareth Bale made it his, and it's a very big goal, an important goal after 25 minutes. Real Madrid, Gareth Bale have broke the deadlock. And a split second of hesitation from Oya Alatabal as well. He could have told Puck that away, I think he tried to win the ball too cleanly. That's what it looked like from Mainz. And he messed it up. Well, that opened the floodgates. Excellent play by Sergio Ramos, he got out quickly. He was able to turn, stay onside. Tony Kroos. Well, it's time to measure a pass into the penalty area. Well, Benzema decided to take it down. Ronaldo could finish it off. Ronaldo does. Real Madrid, two up inside half an hour. Ronaldo lethal in front of goal, and there's a big smile on his face again. Well, that's what he does best, score goals, but I'm not being funny, Benzema should have scored. Benzema's trying to take it on his chest when he should have just headed it in the back of the net. And uh, his missed opportunity created an opportunity for Cristiano Ronaldo, and he wasn't going to miss from there. Super finish done. Onside, you can see from the cross, just head the ball in the back of the net, I thought. But then the chance is half gone, Ronaldo put on a plate for him, sticks in the back of the net. And it's poor defender from Granada, they're all over the place. Oh, lovely play from James Rodriguez. He just flicks it with the outside of his left foot, opens it up for Ronaldo and he sticks it in the net. And that makes him joint top of the Pichichi with Lionel Messi. 32 apiece. Continues his fabulous scoring record against Granada in home games, at least in total. It's his 43rd of the season. He did have one victory, though, against Real Madrid when he was the manager of Levante. Ronaldo. Marcelo. Benzema waiting. I think he went for goal in each other's way, but it doesn't matter. Ronaldo smashed it into the back of the net. They're running riot here. Yeah. Ronaldo. In front of Messi again, Real Madrid definitely steaming to all of the points. Well, this is what Ancelotti wants, and, you know, the keeper does reasonably well for me because Ronaldo plays the ball on the overlap to Marcelo, and Marcelo sticks a good cross, and the keeper gets a hand to it. 
but it falls kindly for Ronaldo, who continues his run. He gets into the box, which is the right thing to do, and it's spooned up in the air. And Benzema gets out of the way, and Ronaldo sticks in the back of the net. There's a little bit of presence from Mainz, but not enough for me. Uh, this game's over. It's just a question of how many. But the right man scoring the goals, he'll be happy. Two goals so far. He's above Messi in the Pachichi. They're only one point behind Barcelona. Pressure. This league title isn't over yet. He could have went 1-0 up. You only get a couple of chances against Real Madrid at a certain time in the game, and now this game's lost to them. Ronaldo wants a hat-trick. Good shot in through the goalkeeper and in. Well, there was real power in it, but it looked as though the ball had saved it, it's a first half hat-trick from Ronaldo, a joyous Cristiano Ronaldo with a big broad grin on his face and a sheepish look on the face of the goalkeeper, Real Madrid going goal crazy. This could be a landslide victory, I'll tell you now, four goals, and they're coming thick and fast, they're just pouring forward, he come inside, you know he's going to come inside, Falke knows he's coming inside, but there's not enough for what they can do, there's a player on the overlap, he just hits it, the keeper gets hand to it, maybe two hands to it, but it's too hard, he, he flaps at it, it's poor goalkeeping for me, from a lot of the ball. If you get two hands to it, it shouldn't go in the back of the net, watch it from this angle, that's awful goalkeeping for me. That's a hat-trick, Ronaldo's not going to worry about it, 34 league goals now, and another hat-trick. <laughs> well, it's an eight-minute hat-trick from Cristiano Ronaldo. Did you know about that flat back four pushing up high, high line? They're yeah. going to be dropping even deeper, yeah. and this organisation will be seen. Didn't work out too well, did it? Is El Arabi? Oh, what a oh brilliant goodness. strike by El Arabi! They're celebrating, they want a goal. There's no goal line technology, but just in the hands of the assistant referee. And he says it didn't cross the line. Casillas was definitely beaten. What totally, a strike! Totally beaten. What a strike is right. Oh my goodness, I can't see it from there, hits the underside of the crossbar, comes down when he should go and put pressure on him, he did pretty well and made him have the shot from outside the box, but it was a good shot, on target and simple save for Casillas. Fran Rico to Ruben Machina, he can shoot as well, oh and it's a mistake by Casillas and he got lucky there. Two shots, both on target in 60 seconds from Granada, what a team talk that was from Abel Racino. It's a long way for Mika Casillas, doesn't it? It's been subject to much criticism. Towards Benzema, and Benzema gets it down and scores brilliantly. Well, we questioned in the first half whether he was right to try and control the ball in a crowded penalty area. He did it again, and he did it in lethal fashion. He was making sure. And he had the time to take it on his chest, but the technique was much better on that occasion. You know, the first control, the first chest control was excellent, and it sets it up for the volley. Ball deep to the far post, have a look, boom, control, right foot, outside the right foot, top corner, no chance. But the market is shambolic. That's in, just outside the six-yard box, he's controlled it on his chest, and passed two players, and got a shot in the goal without being challenged, that's not all. I think they've given it up, it could be seven or eight now. Good to see Benzema on the scoreline, and Ancelotti will be pleased about that. Takes his tally to 21, 14 in the league. Beal's on 17. This is going to turn out to be a training game in the second half, because Real Madrid are going to dominate possession. And there are three of them on side. And Bale, and Ronaldo, it is another. Cristiano Ronaldo has hurt himself in the process, but he still manages a smile because he's hit the back of the net. It's six for Real Madrid, six of the best, four of them for the magnificent Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, well played, Gareth Bale could have scored himself, but he was unselfish and he scores this one for Cristiano for a simple header in the back of the open goals. Well, I said to you, John, this is going to be a right, and it is. I wonder should they take Ronaldo off now? Great ball. No. Ronaldo's not onside there. When the pass comes in, he was the one that was offside. He just catches the post as momentum. He's offside. The other two are onside. Bale's control. Excellent play. Oh, 
once again. Granada just short of players at the back. There are only three defenders back there playing that high line again against the, the paciest attack that I can think of anywhere. I think when it went 2-0, they give up the ghost. I think they knew they were beat. You could see. No pressure on the ball. No pressure on the ball. But look at the mid. They you know that flat back four that was a flat back five. There's only three there. And they've given up this game totally. And it's going to be a heavy score line. Pizzi is an attacking player, creative attacking player that they brought on. So that one was Zeno. It's intent on going toe to toe. Hasn't worked out particularly well. Here's Karim Benzema. Now Arbeloa. And Benzema again. He fancies another one. It's Benzema. And it's in. Well, this is becoming an avalanche of goals. Chris. Karim Benzema deflected and in. The Aramendi smiles ruefully as he waits to come on. Just ten minutes into the second half. It's crazy. Well, the Aramendi was coming on about six or seven minutes ago and they scored two goals in that time. They wrap it up totally. Benzema gets his second goal, which is always great, and he's worked hard. Puts him on 22 goals for the season. And there's the, the, the change. It's Tony Cruz who's coming off. We're going to save his legs. Good ball, good play. Gets it back, Benzema. Could have shot there, took the change. It took, took a deflection. Back is off Baba. Takes a deflection off Baba and into the back of the net. But it's definitely Karim Benzema's goal. Good evasion for Tony Cruz as he is withdrawn. To be fair to Baba, he's the only one really desperately trying to throw his body at the ball, isn't he? Well, I've said he's been Mr. Consistent for me in the Granada defence and the rest of Breakthrough here as well. An all important first goal took 25 minutes to break them down, and then the floodgates opened. It's been a Cristiano Ronaldo show since that. Bale does go for goal. Into the side netting with Oya Alatabal, looking far from in control of the situation. It was worth a strike, it's a good effort. You see the ball's dipping and curling. Keeper doesn't look too comfortable. This is close. Let's have a look. Yep. A couple of inches wide. It's swinging away from left to right, just wide of that right hand post. Played it into the feet of Candeas. Now counter attack, Hesse. To Good Hernandez. Pace. Sprinting after this, and he didn't release it. Should have given it. Yeah. What decision. a. John, what a great run. You watch Hesse giving him the ball and continuing his run. He's just got to feed him in the, in the space. Ronaldo to Bale. White shirts waiting in the middle, including Ronaldo! Oh, denied by Itora. The presence was enough to put him off and deny him his fifth goal of the afternoon. Another clever one too from Ronaldo to Gareth Bale. Bale's run's great. He picks out Ronaldo, cuts it back to him. His first touch wasn't great. John, that was the problem. First touch, just watch it here. Slightly gets stuck underneath his feet. And he puts it wide of the, uh, the near post. That's a great chance for Cristiano. He's had two good chances in the second half to get five and six goals. You forget him though when you score four, don't you? Now <laughs> just dipping a little bit. Marcelo, there's nothing wrong with that pass, is there, to Hesse? And Arbeloa is still working hard, deflection, Ronaldo, oh it's goodness. wide! He's desperate for goal number five for Real Madrid's eighth. He's had plenty of chances. Super cross-field pass, good first touch, Hesse. Pleasant on the overlap, Arbeloa puts in a, a teasing cross and he's stretching for Cristiano Ronaldo. Gets his toe on it, but can't guide it on target. That's one, that's two. That's three, and there's the fourth. <laughs> Seen that a few times, somebody the trademark celebration. Sammy Kadira not involved in the squad today, played for Germany. Yeah. It's uh, Australia. Well, here's Good a chance. Ball. And they can pull something back here. Robert Ibanya through on goal to pull a goal back. It's in. Oh, He's done it. And Granada have something to show. With this afternoon of humiliation, Robert Ibanez has got those Granada fans celebrating. Well, they deserve a goal, as I say, they've played well in the first 25 minutes and had several chances, didn't take them. I've had two or three shots in the second half on target from Candeas and 
Ibanez and Rochina before he went off, but I don't begrudge him getting that goal. Certainly well deserved. Good run. Going to sleep a little bit just there. For me, Sergio Ramos has let him come inside. On the wrong side. Too much pace. Keeper gets his leg to it, Casillas, but can't stop Ibanez getting a deserved goal. Well taken. It's probably the worst culprit for missing chances in the first half, wasn't he? Robert Ibanez, the, the on loan. It's worth asking about Hesse, isn't it? He oh. wants to play more. I think there'd be, I'd be surprised if they were willing to sell him unless the offer was huge. Here they come again. Oh, chance. It's Bale. And the goalkeeper gets his hands to it, and this time just about strong enough to keep it out. Good height for the keeper, though. I think he was stretching for it, Gareth Bale. He wanted to come on and place that one better than that. But he's hit the target and forced another save from Olathebal. Set up by Cristiano Ronaldo. Do you know what? It could have been 10, 11, 12. It could have been a lot more. Here goes Modric. Oh, looking for Ronaldo. Own goal. Own goal. Smashed into the back of his own net by Diego Mainz. Well, that just about caps the humiliating afternoon wow. for Granada. Well, uh, Abel Rossino has resigned to the fact that we're going to get a, a hammering after the, the first half onslaught. Four in the first half, it's now four in the second half. We've still got eight minutes to play. This is good play, Modric getting in. He cuts it back, looking for Cristiano Ronaldo, who would have scored. And the outstretched leg of... Diego Mainz prevents Ronaldo getting his goal. Well, Messi will be happy. He will. He's the only one to be happy, I think. You're right there, John. <laughs> Thrashed, humiliated. Taken to the cleaners, whatever you like. Ronaldo's on at the far post. And it is Ronaldo. Oh. Oh, he's missed so many. He's missed it five chances uh, uh, and more I think he's missed more than that he's had so many opportunities to score more goals not a bad ball he's coming in he's trying to I think the defender throwing himself down Mainz in front of him slightly puts Ronaldo off he's just going to make contact though that would have been a goal briefly the first goal we were back to see Modric's free kick oh. and Ronaldo in. A fantastic five for Cristiano Ronaldo and Real Madrid have hit nine. The goal machine in full working order. This has been incredible. Wow, what a header, but the market again. John, I'm looking at it, and it's a great delivery. It's a fabulous ball deep to the far post. He gets up above everybody. He's two feet higher than anyone else. He's such a great athlete. Five goals in one game, 36 in the league. And it's 9-1 to Real Madrid. Have a look at it again. What's the marking though? Cristiano Ronaldo. Look at it. It's awful. There's nobody picking him up. He gets up above everybody. Free header at the far post. And it's shocking defending, I have to say, from Murillo, who was supposed to be picking him up. Ronaldo's two feet above him. He's good at it. He's good in the air. He's such a good header of the ball. I remember him at Manchester United his first year. He was not that good a header of the ball. And no, he's one of the best in the world for me. Real Madrid's biggest win since September 1967. And you know what? They're the ones that really matter, aren't they? It's all over. The referee does them a favour by calling a halt to this one. He calls a halt to it at nine goals. And avalanche of goals on a memorable Easter Sunday. Gareth Bale got it underway, Benzema got a couple, Cristiano Ronaldo, the star of the show, of course, with five goals, Ibanez with one, that's the definition of a consolation goal for Granada. Diego Mainz with an own goal, unstoppable, incredible, magnificent from Real Madrid. Final score, Real Madrid, nine, Granada one.